16, 2024, if you'll join me in prayer and pledge. Our Heavenly Father, as we come to you tonight, we thank you, Father, for the blessings, the mercy, and the grace, Father. We ask you to watch over this proceedings tonight as we do the business for the citizens that we represent. We ask you to bless all of our employees and each citizen that's uh, here and the visitors of our city, Father. We ask you, ask you to guide us in our thoughts, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Roll call, Patrick. Here. Pete. Here. Donald. Here. Michael. Here. Tim. Here. Angie. Here. <laughs> and Bernie. Present. All right. We have a full quorum tonight. Uh, we have no announcements, no public hearings, no announcements, presentations, and proclamations. I do have an amendment I'd like to make to the municipal docket, and all of y'all have seen and received a copy of the repeater installation agreement. I'd like to take that up under the police department and make that a under police department. I get a motion. A motion. Second. Second. Got a motion in a couple seconds. Uh, any more discussion? All those in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, next, I'd like to approve the minutes of the mayor and board of aldermen for January the 2nd, uh, 2024 on our regular and 20, uh, January 2nd, 2024 for the executive session and January 9th, 2024 uh, work session. Motion to second, any discussion? Motion. Second. second. You got a motion a couple seconds. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, aye? Aye. Any opposed, motion carries. Next, we have the Planning and Development Commission, January 11th, 2024, regular. Uh, motion to second, motion. discussion. Second. Second, motion to second. Do we have discussion? So, uh, real quick, on the uh, splitting of the property there on uh, uh, North Nicholson, Nor North Nicholson. Mm -hmm. <laughs> can somebody remind me, because we discussed, they're, they're using lift stations there now. Is that what we're going to continue to do? Grinder stuff. Grinders. 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 Excuse me. Yeah. We're going to continue to do that until, require that, but the city won't maintain. Right. What we've got, I think, is three suggestions or... Uh, uh, from David uh, are three different thoughts if I remember what I've read correct, correct correctly we could put a line pick up those existing uh, grinder stations or we could let them go with the grinder stations at uh, really no cost to us uh, that would would allow them to go ahead and continue with grinders the grinders won't won't belong to the city it's totally their responsibility, and they will be cl uh, connecting to a two-inch force main and we're as it stands. And a check valve. At and the a top check valve. That's right. Correct. Okay. Yeah. That's uh, I remember, but I just I wanted to go. So, do we need to approve it with that, or does our approval previous supersede? I we don't I talk jump about in. that. I actually under... tried to write. In, we tried to put in our letter recommending approval that it would be subject to the conditions of your December third approval or whatever. And I think in our letter reviewing that rec, that minor subdivision, we put that in there that it should be subject to your previous approval about use of grinder stations. And and the only reason I'm questioning it is I want to make sure that we're buttoning up any loophole, but it didn't say this or it didn't say that. Agreed. You know, and that's why I want to mention it tonight so that we're all on the same page when this goes in. So what, you, what I'm also hearing is, Timmy, correct me if I'm wrong as well, by requiring this, if we get a grant or down the road we do the work, we put the, the lines in there, then it's still up to them. There's, there's no, there would be no extra cost to us in the long run, correct? That's correct. We could put a service to the property line, and they would essentially tie to it. They'd have to tie they, into it. To. And they could That's continue correct. with their grinder pumps, correct. or they could bypass the grinder pumps and go straight into us. Okay. That's so, right. I, but I, I, I think uh, what we really need to do is, is we need to uh, do an uh, uh, amended motion that would say we're recommending the grinder pumps be hooked up to our system at no cost. Uh, not no ownership to us, but on the uh, property owners. Before we do that, to Timmy's point, uh, Timmy with said the check a, valve. Yes. Well, according to item number three in here, uh, what I'm reading it says with the possibility of a check no, valve. We need to require a check valve. Yeah. Joe and I have dealt with this on 
North Island View, where we've had to go back and add some check valves on existing lines to keep the city from being liable of sewage backing Backups. up onto the properties. Backups, right. And that, uh, that protects us then. Correct. Right, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. But at their cost. It's, and it's, it's on them, to, to the, the property owners, homeowners, to make sure that that's, that's put in. It's not nothing, no cost to us at all. Okay. But I, I have a question here. because yeah. I, I do get calls on that. There are the yeah. existing um, grinder stations, and they, we do have to go out and make service calls on those. Um, now, that whole property, just the, those people that are wanting these grinder stations, there are no other possibilities of anybody else buying and not wanting that. And I mean, this is I, one person that's developing this, and that's it. I'm on the way that's four lots, Ms. Lessons. Right, but what about other property out there? What if somebody else wants to purchase it? Are they going to be required to do grinder uh, stations? You talk about property or correct the homes the wrong one Pro Any property, whether it's going to be developed or a homeowner or whatever. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking. I believe long I'll, time looking. Look what what happens to if I go out there and buy a lot? Am I now going to be required to do a grinder station? No, if you have sewer accessible to the lot, you don't have to. You can do gravity flow. Okay. These don't have a sewer main that they can just dump directly into. They have to pump it to the All main. right, so the issues we've had in the past, though, is is that going to cause any issues to these new grinder stations when they all merge? I mean, I know that we've had issues. Yes, ma'am, we do have issues up there, and, and I believe David and uh, their engineer have worked that out to make sure that that system is all going to work um, coherently with each other. So yeah, that's part of the design process. Of course, it it kind of it, it makes assumptions about how many of the grinder stations will be pumping all at one time, but they're DEQ mandated assumptions, and so we're the design what they're proposing conforms with DEQ standards, um, and it and it sh they will all work together the existing plus the new, plus other properties on right. North Nicholson that might one day want to build, they could all have grinder stations there. And, and the only reason that grinder station together. is not working is because be of what they're flushing. Correct. And that's my issue. Is that going to disrupt the other ones, cause any, any issue to another homeowner? I believe homeowner? they're down. No, no ma'am. It'll just be pressurized back flowing up to that one. We'll have to that's keep right. that one going. And the reason that we own that one is because that grinder station is in the city limits. These will be on private property. So therefore, it can never be deemed back to the city until, unless the city somehow accepts property there. Okay. So, so I'm clear. Are we going to mandate the check valve, Joe? Yeah. I believe That's so. I think it's a good offended. stopping point. Indeed. That way, uh, people don't like to mess with other people's um, situations, no. I guess, in this. Um, so that way, they, they will never be messing with somebody else's situation unless that check valve has failed or something like that. And I, I, I think that we have a shutoff and a check valve. That way, we, uh, the shutoff is the city, the check valve is theirs. It is their check valve. Anything after that shutoff, when we cut that off, it'll be theirs from there on. It'll be their check valve to maintain and keep up and make sure that that's working. <clears throat> I did not actually pull up y'all's the minutes from that early December meeting, but I know that that was the condition you guys approved it on is that the check valve is required. Yeah. I didn't actually pull up the minutes to make sure, but, but we've conveyed that to the developer. Well, we've run into a couple times where we've approved something going, well, we, we did this previous. That's the yeah. reason that I kind of brought this up so that I want to make sure all the boxes are checked. So, <coughs> uh, Mr. Mayor, I'll uh, offer a substitute. Uh, motion that we approve the minutes uh, making adding uh, to the uh, the property I'm sorry I'm, I'm the property. Property. Requirements. The, requiring the uh, grinder stations with check valves and shutoff. and shutoffs second. second all right we got a substitute motion a second to approve the Planning and Development Commission minutes with the inclusion of the uh, North Nicholson uh, lift stations to include yeah. the check valves and shutoffs. Any more discussion? No, sir. Here, none. All those in favor, aye? Aye. Thank you. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you all. Uh, approved document of claims number 011624. Motion to second? Motion. Second. You got a motion to second. Any discussion? Here, none. All those in favor, aye? Aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Next, we have uh, unfinished business, the 2023 uh, paving plan. Uh, motion a second for discussion. Motion. Second with discussion. discussion. Uh, 
I know we had talked about the railroad street and I think Patrick had voiced his concern about pulling railroad street off. So we kind of got with David and he gave us this alternative. And uh, one of, you know, one of the other, the, one of the alternatives I added on here that we had requested or some of us was from Daughtery Road to Klondike Road on Commission Road. Asphalted it, grinded. I think it's uh, the edges, and as you can see, there's some more stuff that we've put on there, and it comes right to where our total is. If let me let me ask a question right quick. When you talked about the commission from Daughtery to Klondike, David, does that include any milling that we need to do? We we did. We would need to do some milling, including there at the school tie-in where there's curb and gutter. I did have that in there. Okay, that's it. Yeah. Uh, where it says overlay, overlay and striping, it doesn't, it doesn't say, say anything, anything about that. But you do have it in there. Question. It was included in the in the dollars. In I the did dollar not amount. Okay. Types, so I'm that's sorry. not any more additions. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. That's fine. <laughs> All right. Is that it. Was the call for the vote. Yeah. Okay. No more discussion. Call for the vote. Uh, all those in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Next, we have new business. Uh, Eagle Scout Project, Tobin Loftus. Uh, the courtyard is Long Beach Library. Uh, oh, if you want to come up and squat down to that mic. <laughs> <laughs> well, hello. My name is Tobin Loftus, and I'm with Troop 205 in Long Beach. I am here to request approval for my Eagle Scout project. Um, I would like to spruce up the courtyard between the main library and the children's library. I will be pruning shrubs, cleaning the engraved bricks, and relocating a camellia plant to install new seating, or relocating a camellia plant. Uh, the seating will consist of two reading benches and a picnic table. Uh, I can answer any questions you might have, thank you. Okay, and you've coordinated with Ms. Socia from the, uh, our librarian. Uh, she spoke to me and said that y'all had been in contact about uh, everything you want to do. She's total agreement? Okay. Uh, board, any thoughts? No, I, I, I talked to him once already. <clears throat> a young man called me, and I appreciate that. Talking to him because it's in Ward, too. But I do appreciate what uh, 205 is doing, he individually and all the other young men. And appreciate what you're doing. Amen to that. Yeah. yeah. I want to, I'd just like to add, I mean, I believe within this month, you're the second Eagle Scout, and I want to commend the, the <coughs> leaders of your uh, Scout uh, troop for putting out so many Eagle Scouts. That's, that's something that's gone away and doesn't get the publicity nowadays, but, you know, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, Tobin, let me. I understand that Denise has signed off on it, but do they still need to coordinate with uh, Bob and his group as well? If if he needs any coordination, uh, I would say to allow Bob to it. But okay. based on the leadership of the leaders and what they okay. did over at the cemetery for the Quarrel Cemetery, uh, they're not going to need any help. Perfect. But if they do. Bob Paul with our rec department will be a, someone. If you can't there, just call me and we'll get you in touch and figure out what we need. I need so, a motion. All right, we've got a motion. We have second. A second. We've got several seconds. So uh, any more discussion? All those in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Tobin, Thank you got you. the clearance, brother. Just wait till it warms up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> all right, next we have a grant award and agreement, Mississippi Library Commission uh, Collection Development uh, 2024. Uh, motion to second discussion. Motion. Uh, second and uh, discussion. Hearing none, all those in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed, motion carried. You ready to move forward, Denise, with that. Uh, next we have Sherry uh, Messiano. Am I saying that correct, Sherry? Did I get close? Messino. Messino. Okay. How are you uh, doing today? The Bullard's living at uh, Bullard living at 106 North Lane. Let me get a motion and second so we can motion. have your second. And got a second discussion. All those in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. You're ready to go, Sherry. Okay. Are y'all ready to go? Either one of y'all. We have some pictures. We were here last. Sure. We yeah. We were here last October and um, brought this to the council's attention. We had pictures then as well. 
Um, I was told to coordinate with Chief Seal. Um, he basically told me he's not doing anything that that should be um, that um, that should be Dale in the, uh, in the building sorry. code office. So three months ago, nobody spoke with the Secretary of State's office to try to get him out of the structure, and nobody even spoke to the city attorney. In three months. Basically nothing's been done. Nothing at all in three and months. And I've gotten the runaround so from all, everyone. All, all we have, as you can see in the pictures, is more, more dumping. Garbage. And that's over three lots. That's like a half an yeah. acre yeah. on our block. Next My neighbors are asking me what were they doing because they know that we came to your last council meeting. And I couldn't tell right, them. Well, let me, let me stop y'all. Let me stop you right there. We're going to come back to you, but let me stop you right there. Now, we have had discussion here and council steve you might want to bring us up to if you if you recall the times and the dates because we have discussed this yes sir we we action. we have discussed it in the in the city's authority and what resources we had to do something about it since you've been here on more than one occasion there was a a belief and an understanding that for tax reasons the property or at least portions it's made up of several different parcels Right, Correct. and that at least some, if not all of it, had been um, taken over or, or ownership had been given to the state for the lack of taxes. We have since, in the course of, of your last appearance, found out and determined that one of the lot's owners did bring the taxes current. Mr. Bullard declined to bring his parcel current, is my understanding, Mr. Gunlock. Not sure of the status of the other one. But the state does not have the ownership that we hoped they would, because then we were seeking permission for them to take the property and evict him and, and do what we needed to do with it. The state does not have the authority to, to give us that, uh, because they don't own it yet. So th there has been activity and there has been efforts on behalf of the building department, the police department, uh, myself and others to, to identify a way to cure or try to solve your problem. Uh, the ownership of the property was not is not going to help us, quite frankly. He was evicted off of that property before, correct? Yes. Okay, how was he evicted off the property last time? I'm, I'm not sure I can tell you. Huh? That, the owner? Evicted off the property. I came from out of town that property meeting, right? right? The property owner was from out of town and came in and his we brother. His brother. Yeah, his brother. Am I correct? His, yeah, I, I, it, his brother, Lloyd. Right. Kick had him leave when we were out there cleaning up. He then gave us a notarized letter, because he lives in Atlanta, to have him arrested for trespassing if he came back. Okay. After a short time, he revoked that letter and let him back on the property. What's the letter let him back on the property? Brother did. Yeah, his brother did, Lloyd. Let property Marcus, owner Lloyd. Well, that his brother I would be responsible for thought, all the dumping and the sites on that property. Correct. Correct. Right. Correct. And, Which and that's why he's not getting fines and I think, tickets. I think we did weekly, didn't we? We cleaned that before. We cleaned it and evicted him through Lloyd's. I thought we started coming to a letter, I and we now we're back in there with him in there, and you know the the property owner <laughs> before on one of the other two pieces said that they let it go back for taxes or Lloyd. I can't remember. And, and so we were hoping that the state had it and would give us permission then uh, to go in there and evict him. Now we've got to work through another process again to get back. And I think we went as far, Mr. Mayor, as, as well as assessing the property, leaning the property for the cleanup cost right. so that the city would have an avenue to make some claim to it once the state got it. But the state hadn't got it yet. The state hadn't got it yet. And if they do, we get it. From the state and then we can make sure it's vacated and cleaned and, and the building is there I, I, didn't we start isn't that one of the ones that we started we started condemnation, the condemnation on mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. what last meeting yeah and we were looking two supposed, meetings ago I think supposed to get a price on what it would cost to tear down tear it shed. down uh so we did start the process and i think we were looking at how much it was going to cost to just go in and tear it down and i think we all actually voted yeah to do to once we move get forward it with to that, move yes. forward with the condemnation condemnation and, the, and tearing it down and mike has M well, mike, mike you got we've, we've actually been in there twice we adjudicated the first time and then we went back 
Y'all gave me permission to let Joe go in a second time and clear it off. So this is the third time. Right. I, and I think we discussed I, we'll that, and that's why we. If y'all choose to, but every time it's happening, the city's eating fifteen to twenty thousand dollars. Right. That's why we need to and tear. And I think that's why we discussed we it. We want to just tear to go it down. To condemnation and just take it out. Okay. You know, let's let's get it clear for one one final time, and then that's it. I own a construction company. We own many rental buildings. Not and, here. Yeah, not here. <laughs> and there's only maybe three or four ton of garbage on that property. It's only seventy dollars a ton to dump. So you're looking at $300 or $400 in dumping fees. And you guys own, have a Pelican truck with the crane. So the truck could actually go on the property, pick up all the garbage, and dump it. It would be less than like 500 bucks. Yeah. We want the building. 10 or 12,000. It would be like 500 bucks. We want the, the building down. Okay. We don't want him to be we, able to go back in there. I agree with you. Yeah. We, because we, he does we, go there daily. Yeah. We spoke to the Secretary of State's office. We spoke to a Derek Cooper who is um, Land Department and Tax Forfeiture Division. Okay, and he told us directly that this is clearly a code enforcement violation. You need no permission to vacate it from premises due to unsafe living conditions. He said, so even Period. if the state did own that property, it would still be a Long Beach problem. Okay, just like the show hoarders. When those houses are unsafe living, the village condemns them and gets them out. They're not asking those owners for permission to kick them out. They get them out because it's unsafe living conditions. You need no permission from anybody when it's unsafe living. Now they have no sewer, no water, no electric, and dumping all over the site. They've stolen electricity from us twice. We had to call the cops for animal cruelty. I mean, what more do we need to get somebody who doesn't belong there out of there and just clean up the property for 500 bucks? Yeah, I, that's look, all we're asking. Look, we're, we're right there with y'all. We want to get it taken care of and have a final solution on it. You don't need anybody's but, permission for uh, unsafe living. Yeah, uh, Steve, do we know where the house is at on that property? I can't hear you, Mr. Mayor, over here. Yeah, I keep let's talking. Hold up for a second. I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor. Uh, do we know exactly the owner, or do we know the property owner where the house is located? Have, have we figured that out, Mike? Do we know? That is Mr. Bullard. It's That's Lloyd Bullard. It's his brother. It's his brother. He, still, he, still it's owns, he still owns that property, right? As we speak right now, he does. Okay. Are we within the year you know, so long. to go oh, back onto the property? Passed. I think we have passed that year. Yes, we have. We've got to go through the process again, but uh, you still have contact with uh, Mr. B Lloyd Bullard? <clears throat> I, I can see if I still have a number. All right. uh, I hadn't spoken to him since... I I think uh, you need to see town. if you've got a number and can and see if you can make contact with him and tell him we, we need a letter of eviction for his brother to get him off that property and then we need to and then he needs to give us another letter of permission he, he's not going to do that when I spoke with him last time I think his intent let's give it another try we'll give, he's let's letting give it the another property try go and back. see what we let's see what we come up with through another try and if we can't get that, then we need to move forward tonight, yeah. right now, we'll make that since motion. we, and, oh. and remember, I think it was two meetings ago that we went for condemnation of the property so we can move forward with taking that building down and getting him evicted. Am I correct? <laughs> yes, sir. And I'll make that motion, and as soon as we can get him, what, do we have to send a letter first? Yes. And if he doesn't do it, I mean. Five to 60 days before that process will start. I mean, we'll start it, but it'll be 45 to 60 days before we can actually Before we can do, do action. And that letter goes to Lloyd Bullard? Correct. It does. And can we we expedite that with board approval after the board votes on that? To get that to him as quick as possible, even if we had to have a police officer drive up there and hand deliver it to him? I'll second Patrick's motion. And I'm pretty sure that we, we're not responsible for making sure that letter Arrive, like we have to send it to the address that they have on file and we have to post it in the newspaper but outside of that we have no I was just being facetious there. yeah <laughs> yeah we we don't have to make you know hopefully it gets to where it needs to be but yeah that's and on, if it that's does that's fine if it doesn't that's fine too we've done our due diligence as required by law Council, you got provided, any? provided to the property owner's last known address published in the paper and posted on the physical property the three things you have to do we may have to go out and repost it every day, uh, Chief, because uh, he, I'm sure, no, I'm telling you. We can do that. 
I'm if telling I don't you, have I'll, it, I'll get it from you yeah, and go post it. Right, yeah. and you, I want a, I want an armed police officer over there. Yeah, we go with him. We send an uh, officer with him. Still, all right. As long as y'all there with him, that's good. Because you're probably gonna have to post it every day. Because I'm sure Marcus will take it down, and throw it in the trash. So, all right, we have a motion to second. We're moving forward with this. Y'all see that we have already, of two meetings ago, had discussed this and moved it forward with condemnation. Now we're, we've added some more juice to it, and we're going to go forward. We, we appreciate all your time. And well, we appreciate y'all's patience. Well, I, I also want to say thank you very much for everybody here has been really looking out for us. We've had phone calls from the water department and the police department. Your electric cover is open. Make for, sure he's not from stealing him. from you again. And so we appreciate all yeah. your well, we, on us. This we're, we're, we're Thank as, you very much. We're as sorry about this situation as you are, and we've got to get a final on it. So we're moving forward. Thank Any you more much. discussion from the board? Here and none. All those in favor, aye. Uh, Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you all so much. Thank you. All right, now we move to CSX Railroad, co Railroad Crossing update from David Seifert. Thank you, David. I'm, I'm not used to seeing you on this side of the ball game. <laughs> David was with MDOT when we started this project. Thank you, David. Three years ago? It's been a while. So what I'll do, I'll give you an update. You look at this out. Basically what I put together is is we've kind of gone through, I mean everything that, that the city can do is done. I mean every piece of paperwork is to the best of my knowledge has been signed by the city. We've gone through the, the MDOT local public agency project development process, which is, you know, takes a long time. Couple that with the railroad, um, everything has been submitted to the railroad. And I went and looked at CSX because I wasn't that familiar with the process, but on CSX, they have a, a, a guide on how they do public projects. And there's a, a eight or 10 steps in that process. Well, we were at the very last point in that and that is they're going to provide a cost estimate to MDOT and MDOT will program that project they'll do a, a, a rails agreement with the railroad and right now we have the full uh, plan specs estimate ready to go to MDOT all the contracts are prepared the plans are ready as soon as they do that well that's day zero that I have on this list and so you can see Neil Schaefer submits the PS and E to MDOT day one, and then every one of these steps you see about how long it takes to get through it. And not to bore you with all that, but once we get through that process and go to construction, then there's about 130 working days, which works out to be about 275 calendar days. So from the day that, that they say go and, and turn it in, we're 14 to 16 months to actually having the project finished. So if it happens tomorrow, we're looking at 14, 16 months and all those crossings will be upgraded. Um, hopefully no more vehicles getting stranded on the tracks and that kind of thing. But that's, that's where we're at. Um, if you've got any questions, I'll answer the best I can. I, I appreciate this, David. This is a, a great to have a, a, a timeline uh, when you could add a date to day one, or excuse me, let me go <coughs> down here to uh, day zero to, to to the day that we uh, receive and open bids there to the number twenty two days. If you could give us a a date on there when, when we get to that point, right? No, you don't have that point located yet on the That's calendar. That's right. You're and we hope to get that really soon. I mean, we're waiting on it now. I spoke to uh, Josh Stubbs in the Rails Division okay. last, uh, I think, week before last. This Friday, uh, I'm going to reach out to him again just because he's, he was expecting to hear something with him within a couple of weeks. So I'm following up with him at the two-week mark to see where we're at. Okay. So I'll let you know as soon as, as, soon as we have any update on that. Well, that's good. I, you know, it's like, you know, the citizens don't understand because we spoke about this over a year and a half ago when we brought it and, and made it public that we'd been working on this for over a year 
when we were able to announce a publication on this, <clears throat> I think you had to go back and do more engineering updates after CSX came through and put the new cross ties under because we had an elevation there that complicated the ingre ingress and egress of, of the tracks, uh, which came off to the road. And so a lot more engineering had to go into it again. Yeah, uh, and, and also one other thing is during this process, the, the CSX kind of changed the rules a good bit, and, and they were requiring some additional uh, drainage study and things like that that they hadn't asked for before. So, you know, they threw in a little curveball in there about midway in the process. So that's been addressed, and I think, I think we've got them happy now. We're just, they're happy with the design. They're working up the cost, and then they're going to present that with the, uh, with the agreement. Okay. All right. Y'all, the board, you got any comments, any thoughts? All right. David, we appreciate this. Oh, this is great to see and have, have with us. So we really appreciate it. All right. Uh, next, we have a LED stop sign purchase, Alderman Brown. Uh, I know we had talked about this at our work session, uh, this uh, intersection that we're redoing over here at, at Klondike and Railroad, Pineville and Railroad. Uh, we had talked about putting the, the nice LED lights up, and we had, I think we had got with David, uh, was talking and requested him to get a price for us to put uh, two southbound, one eastbound, one westbound, correct? Yes. That's correct. So this is what that's all about. And at the same time, I know we have some that's at uh, five points. But like the mayor said, those are we put those up because we had them extra. If you remember, they was at Klondike and Commission. Correct. So we could pull them, but it, in the event that we have a issue that something goes out, we do have spares. We just go have to go take them off the poles and put them wherever we need to for time being. Right. So I, I think it's a good idea for us to purchase these. Yeah, I don't see by uh, re taking those other ones down. Okay. We need to buy the new ones. Okay. Put them I up. Agree. I, I agree. I think, I think everybody's used to seeing that. Yeah, yeah. we don't need traffic, to take them down now. Traffic's <laughs> flowing, let's don't confuse ourselves. Right. Yeah. Uh, David, let me ask you a question. Do you have a timeline on when the resurfacing should occur there and the restriping on at that intersection? That intersection? Um, we actually asked the contractor to update us. He has not, but the contract time expires mid-February, and, and I've asked him to... Tell me your plan to get the project done in that contract time, and I think he's working on that. So okay. I, that's uh, what you, my expectation is right now, mid-February. If you get that, uh, any update from him, can you get an email out to the board, full board okay. and council? Joe, what do you, what's the timeline on if we order these? Four weeks. So about the same like time as about the same time as this contract ending. I'd like to make a motion we approve this. Second. We got a motion second for approval for the purchase of the the uh, new flashing red LED stop signs. Uh, all those in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Joe's got a Could I clarify one thing? And that's for the poles as well, the decorative poles, or do you want to uh, regular poles on those? This was not in the I don't think that, that bid. That's, that's separate, Joe. Think, okay, I'm sorry. Poles are a separate deal that uh, we're, we're looking at. Okay. Do you, know, do you know off the top of your head how much the poles are? Do you know how much the poles are off the top yeah, of your head? They're, uh, I have it right here. They are um, $460 for the decorative poles that are in Jeff Davis. Should we, and we've got I'll, two. That's just a single pole that just holds that stop sign. It doesn't we've have. got four. We I, need four. I think we should add it. I'm going to make an amended motion that we go ahead and purchase the poles while we're at it. Uh, did we say four? We need four of them. Well, you're going to have six, two, two on the total. eastbound, two on the southbound, and then four west total. and south. Right now, four. Well, 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 let's go back and look at that thing. It says six here. Because you quantity six. Because you said you wanted to order a couple more to have Ex them two by. extras just in case. So let's just do the so poles for time. So I'll make days. a I'll make a substitute motion that we approve the uh, the purchase of the six 
uh, stop signs that are LED uh, stop signs and the four decorative poles. That's an extra thousand forty. Second. Second. All right, got a substitute motion. Uh, any more discussion? All those in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Next, we have uh, the cemetery ordinance, fence, and services. Uh, Second one. Body. Huh? Police service and body cameras. Oh, I missed that. How did I miss that? I'm sorry. Let's back up to the police service, servers and body cams, uh, Alderman Brown. So at our work session the other night, we was looking at uh, the bond issue and everything and talking with the chief of police. And I've also talked to uh, Chief Skelly, this uh, course of CAD system and so on and so forth. It's time sensitive, it keeps going down and it's been there for quite a while. And also we was talking about the body cameras, uh, same thing and chief, you was go get a Chief Seal, you just go get us a, a price on the, is it five-year contract? Yes, yes, it is. For the, the body cams is uh, $241,275 or $48,255 a year. Mm -mm. But I, I was I talking with, uh, we're trying to get some state money and we can hold off on that till- On the uh, body cameras. Maybe June. Yeah. Well, you know if you get the state money by then? Hopefully, so okay. All right. that yeah. contract's up in June. What about so the, the CAD? No, we, we, we need, need to move forward on the CAD. We need those two servers. The two servers have been there since you've been since there. I, I fixed Didn't there. you say they were end of life? Keep going down, and, and every yes. time, I know when I was there, every time it went down, it cost a little bit more, and now, correct me if I'm wrong, I think just about half of three-quarters of stuff there is outdated in that server, correct? Yes. They don't have... They don't have repair equipment and we I think that high. was on our list and it was uh, the, the, the server and dispatch is 81 6 and the, the one at the police station is 22 4 104 what was the amount for the other server 22 4 22 4 81 6 80, 105 it looks like 104 104 Some, we got to have it. This is something that's very time sensitive, and I mean, uh, if, I like to make a motion we approve this. My only concern, this, I, I mean, we have to have them, but that's that's a big hit early in the budget of 145 outside of the can budget. We, like the body cams, can we can we finance? That, yeah, it has a body yearly. But we're, no, we're no, waiting. No, no, but I'm saying like like it was presented to them. Right. Yeah, you you can finance it, but let's see what we come up with on the money. We got a few months. And, and I can wait on the 22,000 for the one at, at our station, uh, maybe stretch that to the end of the year if possible, unless we have a failure and then it'll be an emergency situation. But the one in dispatch, the 81,000, that affects police, fires, AM, uh, mobile, you know, any ambulance service, any, that, that, yeah, that has to be done. Because I'm not looking at a contract here or anything like that. Do they charge us like set up, you know, in in that where we would be paying double if we bought them separately? No. no okay, no, I'm just looking at any any kind of it's cost savings. It's two different companies. Okay, gotcha. But we we're talking, we're discussing purchasing both of them, and and I understand you said we can own your the, the server for the police department we could wait on. However, if you run into a problem, how much are we gonna spend to get it back up? So I, I, my motion is that we purchase both of them at $104,000. Your Thank original you. motion right. and your original second. Right. Right. Uh, any more discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, aye. 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 No. You opposed, we gotta know. Roll call, Patrick. No. Pete. Aye. Donald. Aye. Mikey. Aye. Tim, Angie. Aye. And Bernie. Aye. All right, six to one, it passes. All right, uh, now we'll go to cemetery ordinance, fees and services, Alderman Frazier. Yes, sir. So. I almost said Brown again. <laughs> yes, he is kind of hogging the, the microphone tonight, isn't he? <laughs> uh, so, uh, Mr. Mayor, at our work session, we discussed cemetery fees um, and possibly changing up some uh, 
some of the ordinance as far as allowing a casket and an urn. Um, since then, we've gotten a email uh, that Joe uh, sent to Stacy um, regarding the water table out there and having multiple, uh, having an urn in a uh, in a, a vault or a casket there. Uh, there's some concerns of uh, disturbing if one is put in uh, before the other. So I want to make sure that the board did see that email. Uh, before I make my motion uh, regarding changes, I, I don't know if you guys want to look at, at discussing further or if we should just move forward and uh, make the changes that we discussed the other night. I'll make a motion we move forward. What would the discussion discuss? So, um, so in a, yeah, and, and so uh, in the discussion after the motion, so uh, under the ordinance, and uh, I have this all written down that I'll give you after, uh, under Article 2, uh, which is the heading of lot, uh, sale of lots uh, and site. Uh, the purchase price currently is $500. Uh, we discussed matching uh, the next, uh, next closest price from, from past Christian, which is $1,500. And as a reminder, Biloxi Ocean Springs and Evergreen are completely sold out. Gulf Pines is $2,200. Which is in Long Beach on 28th Street. Correct. So what we're doing is coming up to match the past Christian one. So that would be the first change. Uh, the second change. To $1,500 per, per, per grave per plot. Yes, sir. Site. Yes, sir. And, and I'm per open plot. to any discussion on these. Uh, then the next change would be. Uh, Article 4, which is use of cemeteries, uh, exercise of rights. Article 4, uh, letter G. Um, number 2, it currently says no more than two persons uh, per plot. And what we would talking about changing that to is no more than four urns under one plot with only one headstone. Uh, and then taking uh, Joe's advice was, uh, you know, there is a concern about if we had an urn, one urn and one casket, but there are areas that we can do it, so I would say we allow it. We, we've gotten them, them, Joe and I have talked about this, and I talked to Donald before the meeting about this, that... Our water table is high over there, and uh, in the pro and we we've been digging. We've been digging graves uh, for a long during time. the week and on weekends for a long time. At cost, I don't remember it's cheap. And we have, we've had to do it, not cheap, and uh, less expensive. But we've had problems with when we have to put a vault in, and then put the, the casket into the vault. That the vault is the walls are caving trying to get the width and the depth to get the vault in. We also have a problem where we can't reach, in, some, in a lot of occasions, we can't reach the six-foot depth because of the water table. Uh, so we need to take those into consideration when we're talking about uh, putting the urns in. If we put an urn in, in first, uh, you know, they want a vault, you know, we're going to disturb the urn probably and then have to put the vault probably on top of it to keep it from coming up. But, I talked to uh, Jason Green with, with the Remans, and, uh, and Donald and I discussed this earlier about, you know, Jason said you could put eight urns in there, but you got a problem still with the water table and cave-ins, and when the, the casket goes in, or if a vault goes in and the casket goes in that, and if, if you got urns in it first or second, you know, so that's that's something we got to consider, and you know I, I agree, you know, with Donald. You know these changes need to be made, especially what he's talking about right now. But I think we all need to be fully, fully uh, 
knowledgeable of what we're talking about there before we pull the trigger on on this. Uh, Don and I also talked to about going to Remans about uh, mausoleums over there to be able to either put casket or, or have a, a vault a mausoleum there. So I think we're going to follow up with that next week with Remans. Well, he also brought up the open and closed fees and the Saturday yeah, that's, and holidays. That's, 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 that's coming. That's next. So I didn't want to get into what Donald's got going on. We're talking yeah. about this. One. I'm just kind of going so, down the ordinance right. in in our in line there uh so that's article four number g uh i mean letter g number two uh, uh so no more than four urns in one spot with only one headstone that's that's important the headstone there's no limit on what they could put on the headstone the number of, of names and verse and, and uh, depths so that we won't be touching then uh, now i'm sorry uh, then uh, basically we need to uh, update uh, number three in case of uh, cremated remains each such uh, urn shall be treated as a single in uh, instrument and pay a ap applicable fee um, so the fees as suggested were uh, 250 for the first and 400 for each additional up to the max. Max being 15, uh, four, four urns. 400, okay. four, no, 400. Four, the number, the max four, number of four. four. Okay. All right, I've seen what you're saying now. Okay. Okay. Um, then the next change would be under Article 9, number A. Uh, increasing that fee from 550 to 750 for the permit. That's a dis, dis basically the uh, moving of a body. Right. Yes. And this is all in line with other cities. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The next change would be charges for burial. And this is where we left it off with open discussion. Um, in there, currently, our uh, weekdays is 500. Um, we talked about moving that to 750 for a casket, 250 for an urn. Um, we need to strike holidays out of there because that is listed under General A. Um, and then we talked about Saturdays. At this, at this moment, we're, we're having to pay overtime, and the uh, sem uh, funeral homes don't have the manpower to do it on Saturdays to come and open the casket. So it, that's falling on the city at our expense at overtime. Um, that's going to be something that, uh, at the boards, I thought we had discussed to removing Saturday. <coughs> I thought so. We too. talked, we said removing Saturday and Sunday. Right. Okay. So, right. so then, so right. then we would strike. We just correct. going by what other cities. Correct. Right. Uh, Raymond, others. Raymond's refused to do it because they've got to call individuals in. And correct. Overtime the, uh, the other cities do not. And then the national cemetery does not as well. Right. So. Uh, so striking Saturdays off of that list as well under, again, under Article 10, letter A, general, under the fees. And then, uh, where is it? There is, okay, um, and that, that would be the only changes. So, Again, I'll kind of go back because we were discussing what we had. Um, I'll start over real quick and kind of uh, breeze through them again. Are you going to are you going to make this in the form of a motion? Yes, so sir. We can go ahead and take yes, sir. That so, down so and... my motion. Okay. My motion here is. Uh, a second. On second. It. Okay. Go ahead, Donald. I'm sorry. Let to uh, change the price <clears throat> from 500 to 15 under Article Two, Letter B, Article Four. 
letter G, number two, no more than four urns with only one headstone. Uh, <clears throat> number three, uh, the cost of the cremation being 250. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, an urn, 250 for the first, 400 each for the second, third, and fourth. Then Article 9, Letter A, $750 from $550. And then under Article 10, Letter A, uh, removing holidays and Saturdays, uh, and the weekdays cost will be seven fifty and two fifty for an urn. I mean, yes, that's my motion. Sunday in there? Yeah. Sundays Sorry. are already All right. stricken within the so ordinance. The motion is to send it to council to let him redraft it because we are going to have to have a yes. public hearing. Correct? Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. that's included in your motion. Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> That was my right. second. That was your second. The only discussion I got, and, and there's nothing in the ordinance pertains to this, we used to have a section in the cemetery there for single grave sites. We try to do two, buy, you buy two grave sites right now, and if it becomes a single burial in there, that the other one can be sold back to the city at the cost, at the exact cost of what they paid for it. So if anybody comes back now and say, well, look, I had to, my wife and I, you know, I've, I've remarried, my wife's there already, I don't want the other site. They sell it back to us. So at purchase bought, price. If, if they bought it for 500 it will be they at sell it back price. to us for 500 Correct. Uh, if they buy it for 1500 and we we have to buy it back, it's $1,500. So yes, make sir. sure that's it. But I would like for us to look and, and see we have a little bit of a new section in there that we could possibly make, you know, 30 grave sites to single sites and maybe add that into the ordinance. Uh, but I, I don't think it needs to be added in now because we don't know if, if we could designate the, a certain little section in there for 30 or so sites without taking away from our, our multiple site locations. So that's all I've got to add to it. Yes, so. I think that's a good idea. We discussed that at the work at, before right. the work session. Right. And I, I think that's something we definitely, we need, definitely to need to do. So I just want to make it, you know, uh, those that wasn't here for the work session, and if it's on the uh, YouTube or whatever we're on out there in the world, <laughs> uh, that they are aware of what we're doing. <clears throat> so uh, the worldwide web. <laughs> worldwide web. <laughs> okay. All right. Do we have any more discussion? All right. All those in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. All right. Next, we have uh, sidewalk ordinance. Uh, it's Alderman Brown again. Well, this is come back from our same work session where we discussed the the uh, the fees and whether we want to do away with this ordinance. I think we need some legal advice. I think a consensus of the board was ask our council if we did away with the. Uh, the charging of in lieu of the in lieu of fees what were we on people that has already paid it, it has no impact on the on the people that have already paid the city at any time can can change its policies and practices and fees and rates um, they, they can be disappointed but they have no recourse against the city and I don't we're we're going to have to this is another as donald was just talking about on the cemetery ordinance this is something we, we need to discuss because do we want the the three options or do we want two options which is either put a sidewalk in or you you don't put a sidewalk in and you're not required to pay any money or do you put a sidewalk in or you pay in lieu or if it's not if it warranty warrants it, uh, the not having to pay because we have, like we discussed this last time, there is some some areas that uh, it's not feasible to put a sidewalk in unless the city wants to remove some of their fire hydrants and oak trees and guide wires, and we're still making the people pay for it. Yeah, and we're still and there's the other thing we got to consider: you got sewer lines, water lines, water lines that might be run, running right under that sidewalk for a right. distance that could have to be came back and pulled out but there are certain situations where i think 
you know, that it, it interferes with the, with the homeowner, the builder, or, or whatever, that puts a burden on them that uh, in lieu shouldn't be put on them. I, I mean, mm -hmm. my opinion is if we're going to be changing the ordinance, we need to go through the two options. Either you're putting it or we, we get the fans. Yeah. I mean, uh, that... Well, and that, if I mean, that's... Everybody else's opinion, but that, that's... Where so I'm our thinking. subdivision ordinance would cover us in for, 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 that, that, for a new subdivision. Yeah. So if we're going to do that, I w if, you know, if we're going to guarantee a variance, then we might as well just get rid of that ordinance completely. You want a sidewalk, put a sidewalk. Well, you don't, no, it's still not guaranteeing the variance. Oh, I, okay. No, no. It, it, it eliminates the right. lieu of payment. They still have to come bring it before the board to get the variance, and we look at them individually and decide. I mean, if you got you what? got a homeowner coming in, they said sidewalk That's on each side we of them. We're, we're not going to give require that variance. You to put that it. was Correct. discussed in the workshop. That's exactly what we had discussed. Right. But if there's uh, North Nicholson Avenue that's getting ready to have two or three uh, homes being Four built more. there, and there's no where for this sidewalk to lead to. Why do we do it? Why are we doing it? Right. So that's the that's the two that's two perfect examples that's right there. Right. So, yeah. yeah, that's your motion. That, that's my motion. All right, your motion is to. Uh, so the two options: either you put a sidewalk, or or we look at a variance. Or we looked at the variance. Okay. We've, and then we've got a second. A second. All right. And we've got two seconds now. Uh, we have any more discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Next, we have two eight. Uh, Lantana Boulevard. Uh, we have anybody here? Yes, yes. Uh, Christopher Sanchez. Yes. Yes, sir. Thank y'all for coming in tonight. Uh, That's fine. We're just. Uh, we need to address this. I, I I don't know that we'll. This is a sap. Uh, the excuse me. The uh, this has to do with our our old evacuation route and the homeowners that are encroaching into it with, with strictly without approval uh, from the city because we haven't vacated that at all. <coughs> uh, the they, house... They, they look like they're possibly encroaching on the homeowners to different properties there. And I would, I would, I just want you all to be aware of this and see if we can get some direction. Maybe council can look at this and give us some guidance on what we need to do We've actually dealt with this for quite a while. There was a previous owner that lived behind him. Mm -hmm. Mike sent letters and all that. Then um, he put the house on the market, and somebody just bought it. It wasn't uh, too, very long ago. Yes, he Mr. McCaffrey. It and all this was resolved. Right. And come to find out, it hasn't. And I believe you have sent more letters to her trying to. We sent the new residents a letter as well. We have not heard back from them. We did send them a letter. How many days did y'all give them to respond, or do you? 30 probably. Can, is it 30? Can I'm not sure exactly. That's exactly usually the standard for response, but we did send them a letter. I want to say that was around the 1st of December and we have not heard anything back. So I, I just want to real quick before uh, Steve, I, I want to kind of revisit this whole situation that we just recently dealt with with the gentleman that was parking his RV. RV on this right away. So this is what happens and why the city took the actions to not allow him to park on that. So I want to say that, which has nothing to do with you, sir. I understand, okay. but I noticed that. <laughs> so we are making the attempts that if you allow one and then everybody else takes advantage, this is where the city has to say, you cannot park on there. Yes, sir. Uh, Joe, if I am correct, this is a area that your department mows, correct? I'm or, looking that up right now. Or I believe we've walked this in the past. We've walked it Could you before. not, this, this is on Lantana in the back of the new section of Green Acres. Looking up the edge Can up. you not send a letter to the property's owners saying that we are coming through to write our prop, I mean, basically clean our property and either you remove the fence or we will remove it for you. Well, I'll be Mike, happy to what see your letter say. What did your letter say that you wrote they to They needed them? to remove the fence. It's I mean, why do we have to have Joe do okay, that? Okay, well, then, then we don't. Uh, and I'm just kind of going off of memory here. Yeah. So we could adjudicate it 
we don't even need to adjudicate. I, I, don't know because it's on the city I think we need to get our, our our attorneys. I think, on that. I think we continue. Yeah, I, I'd I'd recommend a, an attorney from city attorney saying you fail to respond to the building codes office. This is your official notice. We're going to come take your fence down. It's encroaching on the city's right of way. You, need you can do it at your own expense, or, or we'll we'll charge you for it. Mike, how long ago did the letter get sent from your office? I believe that was around the first of December. First of December. The, 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 we sent to the new residents. Mm -hmm. This has been an ongoing an issue because it was two separate residents. I like council's I like the council's idea of uh, following up with a letter from motion. I can email all that information. Copy of your morning. Yeah, I'll make a motion that we uh, have council send them a letter. Uh, Basically, issuing them an ultimatum, and we'll we'll put a drop dead date line for it to be remedied, or the city will take action. Right. Amended. <clears throat> All right, discussion. We got a motion, mm -hmm. second for discussion. Finally. So my last is there. Not, is this the only fence? I mean, no. uh, I think what no, we need to do. More needs to be uh, I, as a city, to right this problem, to correct what we did the last or two meetings ago regarding the RV. I think that we need to instruct our, amend our uh, motion to include any fence or any other property along that line that we need to correct it. And that way we're correcting from beginning to end. Absolutely. Oh, I, agree, I agree with you, but uh, I'd like to get this letter out first because he is having some Sure, water, I, I understand that. Issues, right. issues, so we need to, to get addressed. this remedy. As yes, sir. As yes, sir. I, I have no, I have no issue with that. I would, I would agree that it needs to go out urgently, but I, I don't think it would take an hour's time to go out and find out what the other addresses are. There, excuse me. They're right next to the house behind me, on Marinda Lane, sir. So that's a cul-de-sac. Yeah. And there's only two neighboring houses to it. Yeah, so you can get the address and call his office tomorrow with Absolutely. it. Absolutely. He's got them. Okay, so you like got what? Mike's got oh, We got them, so. So, Mike, I'll you'll, send, my... you'll send your letters out, and then if we get anything, then council will send their letters out. Because no, other, gonna, he, he said he's already done send them all. You just go ahead and send them all? Yes. Y'all okay with that? Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. Okay. All right, do we have any more discussion? No, sir. All those in favor, aye. Aye. Hopefully this will correct your issue. Thank you very much. Thank you. Motion carries. Thank you all. Mr. Thank Mayor. you for being patient with us. Thank you for your service too, Mr. Yes. Sanchez. Yes. All right, department business. Mayor's office, I do not have anything, do I? I don't think so. Okay. Uh, personnel, police department, have a new hire one step increase seven and resignation from the so fire moved. department. Got a motion. Second. And second. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed, motion carries. Next, city clerk, revenue expense report for December of 2023. Uh, motion. Motion, we have a second. Second. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed, motion carries. Next, we have a budget amendment, FY24, streets and drainage. Motion, second, discussion? Motion. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Next, we have City Depository Beard Award. Uh, motion, second discussion. Motion. We get second. a second. All right, Keeney, you won't explain to us because we've sent this out to email to all of them, and you know it's got it in their packet. So I did. Um, we sent out um, advertisement requesting proposals for the City Depository. We received four responses. Three of them were bids. One was a letter saying, you know, thank you for interest, but they were not going to bid at this time. Um, all of the proposals we got were pretty close. There, there weren't a big swing, but the one that we received from pay, People's Bank, once I <coughs> compare interest rates and bank fees, was the most advantageous, advantageous to the city. Okay, okay thank uh, you. We've had a motion for discussion uh, based on Keeney's recommendation for People's Bank. People's Bank. Uh, we have any more discussion to approve People's Bank as our new depository? All right, hearing none, all those in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed, motion carries. Uh, next, we have uh, fire department part-time employees. Uh, motion second uh, for discussion motion. and approval. Second. Uh, discussion. Any, any uh, questions for Chief? Yeah, I, 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 I where, where are you gonna get them from, Griff? Any, uh, uh, we were 
we are going to use some retired guys with experience, and that's, that's where we are right now with the lack of experience we have at the, uh, at the department. Um, beyond savings on, uh, you know, on overtime pay, um, preparing to send, at, as at present, seven guys through the fire academy, uh, starting uh, in February on, on through the summer. And uh, like I said, besides uh, savings, it will give us, let us bring some guys back that have some experience, can go right on a vehicle, fight fire, uh, help us out, basically. I, I think it's a great idea. I was just wanting to know what source you were going to use. All right, we'll, we'll be using some some retired guys. At Pete? Mikey and I applied for it already. <laughs> All I can do is drive. Two exceptions. <laughs> I'll second Pete's motion All with I'm those exceptions. Driving, no. <laughs> Mikey, fall off. George, your talents lie in supervision. <laughs> I will say this. Uh, I think it's a great idea. It is a good idea, and the other departments are picking up on this because Chief Skelly's not the only department on this coast or in this state that is having issues keeping people. Yeah, I, and I would just ask one more question, Griff. If if you had a full timer, if you had a full timer from say Pass Christian Gulfport who wanted to come part time with us, would we entertain that? Absolutely. And we'll put we'll put it out what we're looking for, and uh, we want it. We want it from departments that don't pay as much as us. <laughs> good, good luck. <laughs> so they'll we they'll like it and come put the application in here. Good luck with that. <clears throat> so, all right, we got idea. any more uh, discussion? Uh, all those in favor of allowing the part-time hires? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. That one needs a little bit more energy on that boat, guys. Aye. Uh, thank you, Donald. <laughs> all right, uh, next we have uh, for discussion, uh, add Cux Road to Long Beach Fire District Chief. Yes, sir. Um, eight, ten years back, uh, the county decided that they thought the industrial park in that area was in the county fire district. Uh, had some discussion back and forth. Uh, chief Brown was was still uh, chief when we first started this. Uh, proved our point. Continued on, we said, okay, there it is. Um, not gonna go to battle over it. So uh, now, we're asked to take, take an industrial back over when, when we get in our new fire station and we've been asked to go ahead and take Cuts Road back over. Most all of my career and y'all's career, we have covered that area. Uh, the only situation with it is it does not have water to fight fire, but the county has already implied that they are willing to be automatic response, bringing tenders and, uh, and water supply to us uh, in the event we have a fire there so it would uh we would depend on them to supply us with water how many houses are we talking roughly there are 11 houses back there i think is the count uh now i've spoken to the mayor and uh we have talked about trying to get a line or get with uh dr ladner supervisor for district three to talk about or try to get a water line from Beat Line Road to the first curve in Cucks Road to start with while, we, while they're doing the road movement in that area right now. And then there's another way, uh, Joe and David looked at it for me, and there's a right of way just about directly across from where Station 3 is on Johnson Road, there is a power line that runs through there. And it comes up 
to Salvador Lane. It's, it runs right with Salvador Lane that is in the next curve or just past the second curve. And if we could get a, a water line and a hydrant there, we would be well on our way to having some coverage for those houses in there. Um, that, that's just an idea, and that's a proposal. And you spoke to the State Rating Bureau. Uh, I did. I did speak to uh, Mr. Richard Watkins. Uh, he did inform me that this would have no negative effect on our rating um, that he could see, and uh, he, he thought we would be fine with it. Um, he's under the same feelings as us. That little area is strange right down there. Just south of that is Pastor Shan's area. And then if you go a little bit behind Pastor Shan's area, it's back in the county again. And then we are right in the curve. So that's a weird little spot in the fire districts there. But he said, why would you pass a fire station in a fire truck to go cover an area and them sit, sit there? So uh, he said, no, it, it would, it's fine with them. We've had three occasions, one of them being Cucks Road, where when the county had responded, there was a trailer that was lost, and we've had an industrial building in the park and a large home in the park that, where they've had to drive by us to get to it. That's correct. And, and I, we have two experienced firefighters here, so I'm going to ask out of ignorance. If we are going to take that over and this county's got to respond anyway because you're dependent on them what are they gaining not that i have a problem with it but what are they gaining by us i'm not sure right now if their station 13 out in quavis area and, and this is just speculation I, I would have to make a phone call to find out for sure i'm not sure that station 13 is manned 24 7. i think station four is right up the road by west harrison and, uh, and the next one up, which I think is Station 3, I think it's 24 7. They would be coming straight down County Farm Road to us. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure that the old Cueva Station is a 24 7 uh, man fire station. And, and therefore, you think that's what the need is? That's what the need is. That and uh, mm -hmm. just, just the help covering. They have to come from such a long way just to get to that one little road. And that brings in the, the water supply situation because according to so, so can uh, let me ask you this again due to my ignorance can we not tap that creek in an emergency situation for water supply it's not deep enough for it, us it's, it's not it would, i think say it had to be a we'd have to establish a a uh, uh a dry pump there but it would have to be uh down below you would have to have a hole dug there that right would be pretty significant that would have to be maintained to put a dry hydrant in to be able to pull a vacuum on to get the water up there. Our problem is we don't have a tender and we don't have a folding portable tank that or we're going to, that we got to depend on the county to get in there. We could empty a truck out, uh, you know, a thousand gallons of water in a matter of three, four minutes, five minutes, yeah. five minutes and we have no more water to fight fire with. So they got five minutes to get there. Yeah, so that, that's what Griff was alluding to with having a 24 hour station <clears throat> makes it possible. And I think that's the problem they got into with these other fires they've had. They've had no 24 hour protection at those station. You gotta wait till they get there mm -hmm. and then respond from the okay. station. So according to uh, their map on the MS rating bureau, it is uh, station 13 and it, it doesn't show that it's Man, it's the one by West it's Harrison is. I know for a fact that one's 24/7. 24 24 so my my question is 911, Chief Seal, y'all don't patrol Cucks Road, so we go just route it through the county I for the time so being. For the time being, uh, there is some there was some manipulation of the 911 system when they took the industrial over, and we're going to try to get that converted back. I want to cure this. That way it comes straight yeah, into us. Cure this, buddy. But as as of now, no water there. I don't mind it come, that call coming through the county because I'd rather get them moving mm -hmm. at the same time. We I think that makes sense. And I like the idea of approaching Dr. Ladner or the one coming from the power line. 
We still have yeah, to do if that. If they'll do that. And that's just a proposal, and, and that would be a good thing, but you never know. I'd like to make a motion we accept this and, I second and review it. this in six months and see, you know, what we're looking at, get a report back from Chief Skelly and see, uh, you know, if, if everything is working the way we need it to work. I second that motion. All in favor? All right, call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank y'all. It was a good discussion. Uh, next, we have uh, engineering. Nope, police, nope department. police department. Uh, with police department, this is where we add today the repeater installation agreement. Uh, Chief, you want, you, well, let me get a motion to second motion. discussion, discussion second. and approval. Second. I got a motion to second discussion and approval. Do we have any questions or thoughts before uh, Chief comes up with this. Y'all all, all fine? All those in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. That's good. Move right along with that. Uh, Rusty. Yeah. All right, now we'll go to uh, engineering change order. J.E. Borey's Incorporated Harbor Southeast Shoreline. Bulkhead, motion and second. Discussion approval. Motion. Second. All right, this, this is the additional cost for the additional uh, uh, Bo uh, piling. Piling, piling, excuse me, test, God. test, test piles. piles, test piles, and uh, David, you want to discuss what, explain this, because uh, I know we've all got copies up, but we got, we got to remember we got people watching online. Understood, so we, yeah, we had, uh, and make sure you get know, into the had... mic where they could pick you up back there. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, as y'all know, we had worked for or worked towards seven test piles needed for the these future bulkhead projects we had had a price given pretty quickly for two this will be for the remaining five test piles that are needed to support these future bulkhead projects um I know that a lot else makes sense to talk about but i'll fill in any details if y'all got questions uh, i've got a question it's not on the test piles okay they according to Hunter, are you or somebody uh, pre-stressed was supposed to have 50% of the sheet pilings done by the middle of this month, correct? I, I think that's pretty much the, the latest info. They have them cast. Okay. We've been pushing the contractor to please have Gulf Coast pre-stress give us some actual delivery dates. I, I can't seem to get anybody to give me actual delivery dates, hmm. but I, I'm, I'm asking for it. Please tell us when the piles will be delivered. They were very communicative in the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing now. Well, I'm I'm talking with the contractor. Gulf Coast pre-stress isn't working for me. They work for the contractor, so I'm requesting info from the contractor, and and he fills me in and says, "Yeah, we, we're going to get those cast, and they're ready." But he hasn't given me any delivery dates yet. You, we need them. I can give up. Yeah. We need them to give us a timeline. I know we've talked about before in. The, our meeting here because I asked for a timeline of when those things were poured, <clears throat> cast, and cure time, and delivery time. And we need to know those those specific dates because we're sitting here again with uh, with a lack of that information. And I think maybe uh, Mike could give I, you a name of somebody there that you call and he'll call and we'll should get I can reach out to Mike. Yeah, we can Mr. get point blank asking me see if we can at least get some answers if you don't mind i don't want to step on i do not mind at all i i, I wouldn't mind calling them myself i just normally my my route is with the people who have a who i've kind of got a, a contract with or that the city has a contract with gulf coast pre-stress is not in that contract uh relationship okay not directly I think it's fair for us to be able to ask that question. If we're not getting it from our contractor and we need to send a letter to the contractor with the same thoughts on, on when when the casting is and, and when the cure date is and when the delivery date is, we expect that from him too. Yeah, I, I asked for very specific info about that uh, on <coughs> yesterday, on Monday, okay. and you, kind of got you, some generic response, not specifics. No, we need specifics. Hit him up again and send me his response, and then I'll wait to hear from you before I... Call or you want I, I will do so. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you. Anyway. Probably need to call to make sure that that's why I said call them anyway. the same dates. <laughs> Bless Is you. it not Bless outside you. of our contract for us not 
for the contractor not to provide the timeline, wouldn't that be something in the contract of with the contractor that they have to give us a timeline? Should have been, but it didn't. I mean, we sit here and discuss it that they were all in here for the work yeah. session on it. And so, yeah. All right. Uh, if if we, we one second. other thing, David, if we can't get an answer, can we uh, request that the contractor be at the next board meeting? Mm -hmm. Could absolutely. Okay. absolutely. Yeah. If you don't get an answer to your satisfaction, will you? I'll do let that. Somebody know the mayor's office and let's request that he be he comes okay. to this next board meeting. I'll go ahead and give you permission now to send him a letter. I'm going to send it. I'm going to let him know that I'm requesting his presence if he doesn't give us enough information in the response. Thank you. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. That's what, that's what we need. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We got a motion and a second. Any more discussion on this? All those in favor, aye. Aye. All right. Motion carries. Uh, next, we have uh, five, 500 West Railroad drainage issues. Uh, motion, second, discussion and approval. Motion. Second. I've got a motion and a second. Uh, David, uh, you and I talked about this. I got this information the other day. I took it to you. It's been discussed back in, I think, December, maybe November. I can't remember when this was discussed. Yeah, December. Discussed in December 23 to try to remedy this situation. Uh, so I'm going to hear discussion on what you've recommended and the board. Absolutely. Y'all may recall we kind of offered three options uh, at the beginning of December. Um, one, to go to, to provide additional drainage capacity straight south from on Alexander from this property, the 500 West Railroad. One would be to improve the, the existing ditch line that kind of runs west behind uh, Chevron and, and then drain south next to Fuji across the railroad street. And a third option, which would be to provide additional capacity by building new drainage on Shady Lane. I think at that time, y'all requested that Public Works go out and, and clean that ditch, which I, I believe has been done, been clean, has and been that, that function has happened. So then the mayor filled me in that one of the major concerns, apparently, from, from this resident is along Kohler Street, which is there, that, that road that kind of uh, intersects with Alexander right next to the police station, uh, I think water is perhaps coming across Kohler and across her fence line into that property. And so one of the options there would be to build, um, you know, to construct a swale that would capture that water and channelize it over to our existing drainage. Uh, and then you could do any of those three options that we just talked about. But I kind of think like a base, if you're going to capture what appears to be the problem, you have to build a swale and pipe to bring it south down Alexander. Uh, and so, railroad, those, right? I'm sorry. Across railroad. So if you if you want to do the additional to go all the way across railroad, you gotta you gotta. And these are my estimate of a bid price. Mm -hmm. You gotta spend about sixty grand or so to build a swale and some culvert to get to the existing drainage on Alexander, and then another hundred and seventeen or so to get across railroad street. Now these are again our bid prices. Uh, my best estimate of them in as as it stands right now. That the base work, what I'm calling base, and shown in purple on this exhibit, and alternate one shown in orange on this exhibit, is is the two lowest hanging fruits, I think, where, to to improve drainage. Where is the outfall on, on base one. It talks about an outfall line of the 500 West Railroad Street. Where is there an outfall? It, it would connect to the existing pipe that crosses Alexander. Yeah. So we would have to bring drainage to that point, and then you could do nothing else and just count on that existing drainage infrastructure. How, or gonna, you could do alternate one. How is that going to affect that culvert is, is higher on the west side of Alexander and lower on the east side. How is it going to drain? You're going to have to replace that culvert. And make you the, could replace that culvert. I mean, I think we're talking about. You don't. We're not doing anything. Well, okay. Add more water I think you're talking it. about uh, it is reverse sloped, no doubt, but I think we're on the nature of inches, not feet. Well, no, we're not. Feet. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to hold a little bit of water, but that doesn't really impact the drainage function too badly. But you could certainly. In the last two rains we've had, it's flooded back on there. We've got pictures in here from it. I'm with you. But so. Here's my problem with this whole project. This piece of property has been a bowl since the beginning of time. 
if I go buy a piece of property that's a low piece of property that's always flooded, it's up to me to elevate the property to keep the water off of it, not the city to go spend the minimum of $50,000 to keep the water off your property that's been coming on forever. I mean, when I develop subdivisions, we go in there, uh -huh. we, we put the roads in, we elevate the property. That's where, that's well, where one of the previous uh, owners had went in there. There were junk cars put in there, and they went and dug a hole out to bury but, cars in, and then they tried to cover that little swampy area up. That property's uh, always flooded, though. I've always lived right around the point. I've always lived within 150 yards from it. It's always flooded. Well, it, it has. And I just but, have a hard time spending $60,000. They, they put that covered in when they built the, the low-rent projects across from Central Station. Yeah. Back when I was a uh -huh. firefighter there, some lieutenant at the Central Station, and they were having water problems on their property, so they went down and they let it drain down there, and then they ran it across to that property into that slough yeah. that was over on that side, private property over on the other side. I, uh, I get, but I, I, you I know, just don't know. I think what you're either, saying, get, either we fix issue, this <laughs> or we don't. Beach. This, <laughs> I think what you're saying is the price doesn't justify it, it, pulling water off of one property, make it a dry piece of land, a commercial property. That, that's my issue. So that, that's a lot of money for an issue that the city did not cause. So let me ask you this, uh, Joe: Could y'all not dig a swell? Yes, sir. We can. Just to, I mean, let's let's start. Let's just do this to begin with and build a swell around the property to that pipe. Sure. Because did it flow better once y'all cleaned out behind the hop yes. in and all that? Yes, yes it, it did. I, I so promise it, you. It it yes, it flowed twice. Since no, but she had she had water and vehicles, or he had water and vehicles, and there's nothing around there now. It did flow a lot better because that was slap stopped up. But it was. They had they had the, before it was clean. They had uh, water in the vehicles. Yes. Yes. I'm, if the property were to be built up, back. if the property were to be built up, the cars wouldn't flood. Point blank. My opinion. But can we at least just maybe that's start what, and do a, a swell? What you asking? Uh, it, it doesn't pertain to your question, your discussion. But in that first picture that we have with the culvert, a after Joe's diagram, I mean David's uh, diagram, it looks like there's another pipe there. And, and I'm going, is that us as well? Do you see where I'm? I'm Looks like a piece of sock pipe. Like sock pipe. Yeah. yeah. Is that drainage from the north there? <laughs> that wouldn't be anything we put in. No. But okay. what a ditch I was going to say no. We <laughs> uh, a ditch just don't covered. Know. We covered the no ditch idea. there, right? The people that owned that property years ago. Didn't we that cover the ditch? Cars in there. We, we haven't covered any gotcha. ditch. Yeah. Back through there. Stop right there. You know what mm -hmm. that looks like? You're talking about on their pro private property. No, there, there wasn't. Uh, that got well, covered like years ago. I can't say there was a, from what I've been told, there was a ditch through that property years and years ago before I was here, and it was, was covered up. I don't have that history. Yeah, it was. There was a drainage ditch all the way through there. That was before it was a lumber yard. That was, that was before, that was before, the before my time, but I, I, I know the yeah. property. Yeah. All it was time. filled before the lumber yard went Correct. Down. Yeah. It was filled all the way over right there at that last e bit. Even back when it was a lumber yard. It, they built it up around where the pipe came. After they put yep. that low rent on, they built up around it to try to keep it, and they were kind of pushing it back. And, and I guess I guess that's my issue, because back when it was a lumber yard, that whole area is still flooded. So this isn't something that the city has done any work around or allowed any development. The only thing the city's done is put a pipe across from the west side of Alexander to the east side to help. where it's higher on the yeah. west side yeah. and lower on the, so it's a reverse drain onto that property. That's the only thing. If we're not going to do anything, take that pipe out, fill the road in, and don't let it drain anywhere. Or fix the pipe where it drains in the right direction towards the ditch without coming up. But I, I don't know. That's why I asked the engineer to give us some Have you all shot that pipe to here. see how much it's fallen, whatever direction? You said it's fallen to the east? Yeah. I, yes, I, I believe it's like an inch or so. I, so I don't have so, that number. So it's basically things. a level pipe. So the pipe being there no, is... No, it's not level. It, it's higher on one end. If it's if there's an inch higher on one end and an inch lower on another end, it's one inch, so it's not level. But it's still allowing water out of her property flowing <clears> west, correct? 
State that again. If the ditch is full on the other side, it's not going anywhere. On the, on the west side, it's not draining. Is water will level itself out. It's going to level. So, but the water is working its way across Alexander and under railroad from that property. Yes. Well, that, where, so where at on, on Alexander is it working its way across? It comes right there by the uh, Fuji's, <clears throat> crosses by Fuji's. That's where it crosses the railroad. But on Alexander, where is it working across Alexander to drain? At that culvert. At that culvert. Is it going through the culvert or over the road? It's going through the culvert from what I understand. I don't, okay. I don't see it topping it. It hasn't right. topped the culvert many times. Do what? I said I'm, I'm not aware of it topping the culvert. Over Chief, you, have you seen it across the road right there? Or do you recall? No, the only place I see it standing is on Kohler. Kohler and right. Alexander. So right. if we did a it's swell always... there just to begin with, why don't we try that leading to the culvert and just, I mean, I, I want to help the, the people, no, and I, but. I agree, I'm, but that's something utility partners can go yeah. to, not bid out for 50 something thousand dollars. Right. Yeah, I, and I mean. I dig a swell in a day's time. At a certain point, too, it's going to be on the property owner to elevate their property. Correct. You know. I mean, I mean that's, that's where I stand. But I, I, I'm all for digging the swale to see, to, to help get some of the water around there faster. Time for discussion, not for us. Go with the swale. So I, I, I'd like to do anything. How much okay. is a swale? I, I, I mean, to bid it out, you're looking at flavor. $50, no. We talk about I, I'd like to make a motion that we let. H2O, not utility partners, H2O, uh, construct a swell from Kohler to the drainage pipe on Alexander, and let's just say that would be step one to see how that works. Second. I got a motion and second to, for H2O to construct, construct a swell and see how well that works. Uh, all those in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. All right, next we have uh, Public Works. you have anything? Yes, sir. Uh, Recreation is not here tonight. Uh, building office, Mike, you have anything? Sir. And the Municipal Court is not here tonight. Uh, Harbor, David? Okay. Uh, community Affairs, Courtney's out. Uh, Derelict Properties, 108 Park Row Avenue, assess cleanup and penalties. So Public Works has cleaned um, this property, and at the pleasure of the board, um, we could assess the cleanup and penalties against the property. So um, what you would do, you would have to select a penalty. Um, it would either be $1,500 or half of the cleanup, which is three eighty-five eighty-five. My motion is to do the max of the 1500 Second. Second. I got a motion second to do the max of the 1500. I do need a roll call because this is resolution. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? All right. Patrick? Aye. Pete? Aye. Donald? Aye. Mike? Yes. Tim? Aye. Angie? Yes. Bernie? Aye. Okay. Motion carries. All right. Next we have uh, zero via Don Ray, excess cleanup and penalty. Same situation. Uh, the penalty can either be $1,500 or $362.85, being half the cost of cleanup. Motion to uh, assess the fifteen hundred. All right, we got a motion and a second, second to assess the fifteen hundred. Uh, Patrick, aye. Pete, aye. Donald, aye. Mike, yes. Aye. <coughs> Angie, aye. And Bernie, aye. All right, motion carries. Mr. City Attorney, you got anything? Yes, sir. I thought you said say yes. <laughs> Thank thought you. about it. Thought about it. But. Thought about <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, motion and second to adjourn. I move. Got a motion and second. All those in favor, aye. 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 We adjourn.